Hello, my name is Veronique Tessy. I am a postdoc researcher at the Remote Sensing and Geoinformation Department at Wageningen University. And I'm also part of the Global Comparative Study on Red Plus of the Center for International Forestry Research. Today you will learn about assessing and analyzing drivers of deforestation and forest degradation, one of my main research topics. The module was developed by Erika Romijn and Martin Herold. Here is some interesting background material for further reference. In this lecture, I will give you first an overview of the UNFCCC requirements relevant for addressing drivers of deforestation and forest degradation. It then proceeds with an overview and explanation of the different types and definitions of drivers, the direct proximate drivers and the indirect drivers or underlying causes. Next, different approaches to monitor Dryag drivers of deforestation and forest degradation are explained. Also, approaches to monitor indirect drivers are mentioned, but this is much more complex, as I will explain. The lecture ends by explaining the role of drivers in developing national forest reference levels and for designing policy interventions. So let's talk about the UNFCCC requirements on drivers. In short, countries are requested to address the drivers of deforestation and forest degradation in developing and implementing their national strategies or action plans. The UNFCCC acknowledges that these drivers have many causes and that the actions to address these drivers are a function of a country's national circumstances, capacities and capabilities. So, countries are encouraged to take action to reduce the drivers, share the results on addressing drivers, for example, via the web platform on the UNFCCC website. And also to take note of the information from ongoing and existing work on this issue by other countries and organizations. As you can see, the UNFCCC requirements are quite broad and not very detailed. So, what is now the relevance of drivers in Red Plus policy development and implementation? In order to really and effectively reduce emissions, it is essential that climate change mitigation policies address the actual causes of deforestation and forest degradation. For this, we need to understand and monitor the drivers so that interventions can be designed specifically to target those drivers and so that the impact of the interventions can be assessed. Now let's move on to the different types and definitions of drivers. In literature there is often a distinction made between direct and indirect drivers. Where direct drivers are human activities that directly affect forest cover, such as forest converted to agriculture or for settlements or mines. Indirect drivers, on the other hand, are the social, economical, political, cultural and technological processes that influence the direct human activities. Think about population growth, migration, weak governance and so on. This slide, this slide shows some examples of different direct drivers of deforestation. Commercial and subsistence agriculture, mining, infrastructure and urban expansion. Some, some examples of activities causing forest degradation are timber and logging activities, fires, livestock grazing in forests, the collection of fuel wood and the production of charcoal. This and the previous slide gives a categorization of drivers based on a paper by Hosse Numa and co-authors, published in 2012, but other categorizations are possible as well, of course. For example, note that timber and logging activities are here categorized as, as a degradation process. The underlying idea is that when a forest is logged and after a while starts to regrow again, the land use does not change and it remains a forest. So here we talk about a degradation driver. When a forest is logged and the cleared land is converted into agriculture, then the process would be categorized as commercial agriculture in this framework. Of course, this is one way of looking at it and other studies might consider categorizing logging as a driver of deforestation instead. Let's take a quick sidestep to the Hosunuma study I mentioned before. 
and see what are the main drivers of deforestation and degradation. These results are based on an analysis of RED plus readiness reports and other literature. The bar chart shows that the largest driver of deforestation worldwide is agriculture in terms of area of forest loss. In Latin America it concerns mostly commercial agriculture, while in Africa and subtropical Asia there is an equal distribution of commercial and subsistence agriculture. The largest driver of degradation in Latin America and subtropical Asia is timber and logging, while in Africa it's fuel wood collection and charcoal production. I will skip these slides for now. So moving on to the main indirect drivers of tropical deforestation and degradation. Economic growth and population growth can be important indirect drivers through an increased demand for timber, mineral resources and agricultural products, which increases the pressure on forests. Insufficient regulatory arrangements and enforcement may be an important factor as well. Other indirect drivers related to the enforcement of forest policies are amongst others weak forest sector governance and institutions, conflicting policies, illegal activities, corruption, land tenure uncertainties and inadequate natural resource planning and monitoring. Several trends concerning the indirect drivers are expected to increase the pressure on forests in the future such as an increasing meat-based diet in large economies in Asia, Latin America and all exporting oil exporting countries, and a global increase in population and growth in developing country regional markets for key commodities. These shifts will redefine pressure on the forest and lead to trade-offs among different land uses. To summarize, this figure shows the linkages between the direct and indirect drivers of deforestation based on a conceptual framework by Geist and Lambert. In reality, the distinction between direct and indi indirect drivers is not always made so clearly, but at least for monitoring the drivers of deforestation and degradation, it can be handy to make the distinction, as I will show in the next section of this lecture. This section deals with different approaches for monitoring drivers of deforestation and forest degradation. So why is it important to monitor drivers? By monitoring or tracking drivers over time, greenhouse gas emissions can be attributed to the specific causes and a country can follow the impact of different drivers on deforestation and forest degradation. This provides essential information for countries in their RED plus strategy and policy design and implementation. Countries should consider and integrate information beyond the forest sector in order to track driver activity. As we have seen in previous slides, the main driver of deforestation agriculture lies outside the forestry sector. But also information about social and and environmental safeguards and the evaluation of trade-offs and livelihood implications are important reasons for engagement with non-forest sectors. This figure shows several forestry activities and how they affect forest carbon stock changes over time in different ways. For example, a forest clear cut, the black line in the figure, will cause a sudden drop in forest carbon stock to almost zero. Carbon stocks might then remain low afterwards when agriculture moves in, but might also increase due to natural regrowth like the green line shows. This is a very different process when we compare it to the continuous logging, the pink line, when forest carbon stocks have a more zigzag pattern. This also has implications for monitoring. The particular driver and, associ and associated carbon stock changes in the country determine what kind of monitoring approaches are needed to track them. So drivers are key to defining monitoring priorities and appropriate methods for MRV. So now we know why monitoring drivers is important. And I will talk a bit more now about important aspects of monitoring drivers. As monitoring drivers requires resources and efforts additional to estimating and reporting greenhouse gas emission, 
It is recommended that countries integrate and combine capacity development efforts for monitoring drivers as much as possible with ongoing national forest monitoring. For example, linking activity data monitoring with driver monitoring would be a good place to start. With remote sensing data, deforestation areas can be mapped and directly linked to the follow-up land use, which gives an indication of the activities of deforestation. Spatial context and location can also help in the interpretation. For example, the size of the deforestation area gives a first indication about the driver and enables one to discriminate between commercial versus subsistence agricultural expansion. In the country examples of this module, a practical example for assessing direct drivers in Indonesia is given. Also, regional and local knowledge from experts and communities obtained through ground observations or national inventory inventories is needed to support the interpretation of land use patterns to determine the exact drivers of deforestation. Drivers of forest degradation are more difficult to detect with remote sensing, so ground data is very important. Because of the high spatial and temporal variation forest carbon stock changes due to degradation, frequent ground surveying is required. Assessing forest degradation means that the current state of the forest needs to be compared with the previous state of the forest. However, it's, of, it's often difficult to get historical data on the forest condition and carbon stocks in the forest. This is true for remote sensing as well as ground data. In that case, an appropriate reference condition or benchmark needs to be established. This is a challenging task because it's difficult to define forest degradation. For monitoring forest degradation associated with local markets and subsistence agriculture, Proxy data may be needed as historical, as historical field data sources are generally rare and remote sensing approaches are also limited for this purpose. For monitoring of larger scale types of degradation, a combination of satellite data, forest concession data and forest inventories might be useful. This slide give an, gives an overview of remote sensing approaches to monitor direct drivers. I, I won't go into details here, but you can find more information in the Govsi Gold Source book. If we look at the current status of national capacities to monitor direct drivers, we see that they are often still low to medium. Also, data on greenhouse gas emissions from drivers is commonly not available on the national level. Now I will tell you a bit about approaches to monitor indirect drivers. The assessment of indirect drivers is more complicated. Approaches rely on socio-economic, statistical and modeling analysis using economic, social and demographic data and also analysis of policy and governance aspects. So you need a lot of data from outside the forest sector. It is also important to address indirect drivers separately and examine them at various scales for specific analysis and intervention strategies. It is not always possible to establish a clear link between forest change and direct drivers on the one hand and the underlying causes on the other hand. To assess the indirect drivers, good subnational data are needed that describe the economic, social and demographic conditions that are linked to, de to de deforestation patterns. These data are often scattered among different sources and need to be integrated and harmonized before they can be used. We have arrived at the last section, the role of drivers in developing national forest reference levels and designing policy interventions. Forest reference emission levels can be adjusted based on historical data and taking into account national circumstances and may also include scenarios of future deforestation and degradation. For this, an understanding of drivers and their future developments is essential. So the availability and quality of driver data is essential in establishing reference levels. But as we have seen, both availability and quality is often lacking. A stepwise approach may then be used to gradually improve the quality and accuracy of the reference level, making use of increasing capacities and improved data input. Countries will need to reduce emissions, while indirect drivers are expected to increase. 
Therefore, in order to be successful, Red Plus strategies and interventions need to address direct drivers as well as indirect drivers. Integration of different sources of information helps in addressing drivers, so engagement with non-forest sectors is important. This table shows some examples of Red Plus interventions and strategies from national Red Plus readiness plans. I won't go into detail, but what is interesting here is that the interventions mentioned in this table are mainly meant to address national and local scale drivers. The Red Plus readiness plans largely omitted strategies to address the biggest global driver of deforestation, commercial agriculture and its underlying drivers. We have arrived at the end of this lecture. Let's go over the key messages from this lecture. Addressing drivers of deforestation and forest degradation should be part of Red Plus national strategies or action plans. As we have seen, a distinction can be made between direct drivers and indirect drivers of deforestation and forest degradation. Remote sensing analysis combined with ground observations is important for assessing direct driver, drivers. Indirect drivers analysis is more complex. Could subnational data from different sources and sectors is needed? And then driver's input is essential for developing Red Plus forest reference emission levels and for developing effective Red Plus policy strategies and interventions. So now we have come to the end of this lecture. You can also find some country examples and exercises. There are, here are some of the recommended modules as follow-up and also a reference list is uh, provided. Thank you for listening.